Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to get that timing on point. <laughs> oh, hope you guys are fantastic. Welcome to the heart, to Heart of Christ Ministry. I am your host, Reverend Sean Robert Grant. And I had a great day off yesterday. Was able to go within, connect to the divine even deeper in a deeper capacity. And I really feel like today's message is going to be indicative of that. And uh, I just want to say, hope you've had a fantastic weekend. Hope you are continuing to work on yourself and to continue to be better uh, in every facet of your life. Because ultimately, at least for me, the fun thing about life is just improving and growing and understanding what the truth about life is and how do we make it optimal how do we make it to the very best of our choosing right because today is going to prove that that power is in the palm of your very hand or more or less in the forefront of your very mind okay so if you're willing to take this journey with me today i promise you you will see your life in a whole new light but all you have to do is just be open be willing and be honest with yourself, and that is going to take you to a whole nother level, all right? But before we get into that, we got to do our stuff. We got a couple things here, and then where's my abundance, and then we're going to get right into it, okay? So try to do this a little bit quicker because it just, you know, I'm saying the same thing. So um, any prayer requests, any comments, any topics that you want me to discuss here as we do these messages, um, nearing 30 here real soon, which I'm super excited about that. But if there's anything you want to to relay or co or want this ministry to correspond with you on, feel free to write us at showing 4 at gmail.com. I will get to that as soon as I possibly can. I'm going to pull this up again at the end, but I want to just let you know right off the bat that you can write to us for anything. Um, prayer, divine agreement, uh, comments, ideas, suggestions, whatever it is, feel free to write and we will take care of it as soon as we can. All right. And then from there, bam, so a seed today. If you feel this content has benefited you in the past or is benefiting you today, which I know it's going to benefit you today too as well. Um, if you feel inspired in any capacity and you want to take that energy and transfer it out into a space of love, towards this ministry, guys, by all means, feel free to donate or sow a seed rather, like sow a seed better. Uh, Venmo, Heart of Christ Ministry, PayPal, Sean G04 at gmail.com. Keep in mind that the seed that you sow never leaves your life and it continues to expand as long as you bless it and put that love on it and continue to give. Let your giving be inspired today by Heart of Christ. All right, guys, are you ready? Are you ready for this? All right, here's our game show. Where's my abundance? <sighs> so today's message ties so much in to this concept. And I'm telling you, I care, I care, I care, I care about the way that you think, because I know without a shadow of a doubt in my heart, how you think your dominant mental images and thoughts are controlling what shows up in your life. I promise you that, okay? So this is why we play this game, Where's My Abundance? So you know the drill, 30 seconds, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to think about what it is you're grateful for in your life, whether it's tangible or intangible. And what I want you to do is write them in the comments. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal with what you put in the comments. Uh, like since we've been playing this game all last week. And so just keep that going. Right. And, and look, whatever it is, don't be afraid to say you're grateful for it because guess what? You can be grateful for something like your hair comb, right? Who wants to go out having hair that's not combed out properly or brushed out properly, whatever it is, be grateful for it because it's going to put your mind into a place to manifest more of what you're grateful for. All right. The timer's on you. You got two sets, two sets, two rounds of 30 seconds. Where's my abundance? Turn that up, DJ.
All right. Fantastic. Once again, lay it on in the comments when you find out what it is you're grateful for. It could be your children, could be your parents, could be your school, could be that the fact that you feel healthier than you have been in a long, long time. You something of uh, some of money just came in and you're grateful that life's a bit easier because you have more money into your life. You're grateful for the books that you have that allow you to stay up on your knowledge and your wisdom. You're grateful for just the presence of God giving you life today. Whatever it is, put it into the comments, ladies and gents, and we will come together and experience that gratitude, that abundance, that feeling of ha. Ah. And in just a bit, right after this second round, I am going to share something with you that I am grateful for here in just a bit. All right, you ready? Round two, here we go. 30 seconds, where's my abundance? Welcome back. All right. How amazing is that? That makes me feel so happy within because I'm focusing on stuff that I wouldn't normally focus on, but I'm placing my attention in that space and it's expanding into my life. And I'm going to let you know what I feel so grateful for and I feel like is a testament of abundance. OK, so I want to share a quick story with you real quick before we get on. Hurricane Katrina basically obliterated my entire existence so much so, right? So much so that when I moved, I didn't have any furniture, right? I didn't have a, 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 a chair to sit in to do certain things or bed to lay in. I laid on my brother's floor, um, you know, kind of waiting it out to see what was going to happen. And this wasn't the only time that this actually transpired. When I, I want to say I first moved to California, but when I was first able to financially get my first apartment in Canoga Park, which is way out there, um, my brother and I didn't have any furniture, right? So there was really no place to sit. So we would literally lie on the floor to use a computer to do different things. And what I'm grateful for right now is chairs, <laughs> chairs and a table. I can sit in these chairs, in these tables. And you, you wouldn't think that that would be something that would be like, you know, something you can be grateful for, but I'm extraordinarily grateful for it because I realize what it's like not to have that furniture and to have furniture and to be able to sit and to be able to do what I'm doing with you right now brings me so much gratitude. So thank you for allowing me to share that and let's rock and roll with today's message. Thank you for playing today's game of Where's My Abundance. And guess what? You can play this game all day long. It doesn't have to stop here. Give yourself 30 seconds to find out what is abundance in your life. Where's my abundance? We'll see you tomorrow when we're back at it. Today's message, ladies and gentlemen, Heart of Christ Ministry. Yes, Lord. Your life is the dominant mental feeling or image you are holding in your mind. All right. Ooh. OK, so here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I want you to open up. Right. And as the light is shed on me, that sun coming through my window, I'm going to shed some light on something that's going to transform your life if it hadn't done it already, because this is something that you need to know, okay? Your life is the dominant mental feeling or image that you hold in your mind. What does this mean? This means that our life is a product of our deepest, most heartfelt, desirable thoughts, right? And so we've talked a number of times about how the universe does not discriminate. The universe is very impartial to the things that we do in the sense, okay, in the sense of what we're putting an emotional charge behind. And so this is where you really have to be vigilant. You got to be vigilant because if you're putting feeling, if you're putting emotion behind a thought that doesn't serve you, 
that's going to be your experience because the universal mind, right, is impartial. The universe is set up to just give you whatever you deem has the most importance, right? So what is what does that mean, right? So we just played a game, right? And we took our attention and we zeroed in on where's my abundance. Guess what? There's a purpose as to why I do that every single episode or message because that relays a message to the universe, to the, to the creative mind, the divine mind, more of abundance, more gratitude. So I make it a point to do that purposely because I know that the universe will pick up on it. And if you decide to do that all day, let's say one hour, every hour you decide to do that for 30 seconds, two times around, your life will absolutely transform into something that is full of stuff to be grateful for. And it's just that simple. And it's just knowing that the divine is picking up whatever thoughts we're putting down. Right. And so it's a process to understanding because a lot of times we're unaware of what type of thoughts we're truly giving feeling to, giving emotion to. But I can tell you, just look at your life. Just observe your life right now. Take an inventory of your life in every single area. Right. And let's let's just put it out there. If you got if you, you're having relationship problems, guess what? You've got thought forms around relationships that are causing you to have issues. Right. There's a thought form there that you've charged up that the universe is saying, there you go. Right on a platter. Just like just like you felt it. Not like you like it, not how you've 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 preferred, but just how you felt it. There it is on a platter money. If you're having issues with money, let's say you're in a lot of debt. You can't really seem to keep money. You have thought forms surrounding money, right? Debt. Debt is a thought form that you believe more in your lack than you do in your surplus and your abundance. Right. And this is not to say you know, to pick people apart. This is here to help you to rectify this and move forward to a higher, elevated, more prosperous way of living, not just money-wise, but in every way. Prosperity is like health, happiness, success, career, money. It's everything, right? So to understand maybe my health, you know, maybe I'm having issues with my weight. There's a thought form there, right? Every single area of life, when there is a problem, it means that there is a thought form you are holding into place that is not allowing you to think the truth of who you are. And that is a divine being having a human experience who is perfect in every sense of the word when we, when we get back to the God consciousness. So the first couple of episodes when heart of christ ministry was was started this became come on in love this became a situation of we want to get into a god consciousness right we want to step into a god consciousness that is able to allow us to put ourselves into a place where we're no longer resonant with those thought forms, where we're no longer resonant with feeling or thinking or being, right? Someone who is deficient as it relates to the life that they're living, because it all gets back to your thoughts. All right. So let's get into this. Number one. You want to feed your mind the thoughts you'd like it to focus upon. OK, you want to feed your mind the thoughts you'd like it to focus on. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying get control of your mind because that's almost impossible. Right. It's impossible to a high degree. And it becomes very hard, especially if you're dealing with a lot of of, of thoughts that have been around for a long time. They're not going to go very easily. Right. But how do you feed your mind with thoughts? that you'd like to focus on. Think about what it is that you want in your life, okay? Think about what it is that you want in your life. Think about what it is that you desire 
I'm about to say decide, but desire to have come into fruition as um, circumstances, as manifestations, right? If you look in the description, we talked about, and I, and I got this from Emmett Fox, who said, in the Bible, within means thought, without means manifestation, right? So if within means thought, what kind of things would I like to have bring within me that are going to result in manifestation? All right. And there are a number of ways to do this. As a matter of fact, I'll give you one way. I carry around a notebook, a notebook that has a multitude of encouraging, inspiring, uplifting, prosperous scriptures, phrases, quotes, paragraphs, feelings that I felt. And I carry that around. And I want to show you something. So everything in the universe carries a charge of energy. Okay. Everything in the universe carries a charge of energy. So within this book, all of these prosperous words and feelings and everything else that carries an energy. And this is always on my body. If it's not in my back pocket, it's in my front pocket. It's somewhere near me. And that energy is resonant with my energy. Right. So I can remember when I first started this, I cut out actually. Yeah, I cut out a half of an index card. And I wrote down all these like like peace, love, wealth, prosperity, health, success, you know, compassion, harmony. I wrote all of these down and I laminated that card and I kept it in my pocket. Why? Because the energy of those words, as they're on my body, they're blending with my energy and it's helping my energy to think more thoughts in that capacity. Right. Another thing I used to do, you can find just about everywhere, YouTube. Uh, iTunes now, um, subliminal messaging, right? Begin, even if you play it in the background on your computer or on your phone, begin to feed your mind the thoughts you want to think. And this is a great way. Now, these won't necessarily shift you instantly because we're going to get to that as to how to do that. But what it does after a certain time of repetition, after a certain time of seeing stuff, after a certain time of hearing stuff, after a certain time of speaking stuff, your subconscious mind is going to pick that up and it's going to resonate on a deeper level. Right. That's why if you grew up having somebody say, well, I'm not made of money or money ain't don't grow on trees, you likely have a thought form around debt, around lack. Right. So you just got to transform that up. Another thing is, is, you know, if you can, you kind of can't really see it around me. But there are paintings. Actually, if you look on that door behind me, you can see there are a number of inspirational quotes that I have to visibly, not always consciously, but visibly look at before I walk out the door. If I go to the door to do anything, I have to look at those things. Guess what? My subconscious mind picks it up. Right. And you, one of the, the, the most important ones that I remember right off the bat, it says proceed as if success is inevitable. And although I'm not consciously doing this, if my eyes see it, my subconscious mind has got it. This is why it's so important not to like get hung up on the news or any type of stuff that's going to feed you the opportunity to think thoughts that you don't want to or feel feelings that you don't want to because the power in thoughts is certain thoughts can send a charge through the body, right? You know, you tell somebody you are absolutely wonderful. You are a beautiful person, right? You're a beautiful person. That sends a charge, right? You tell somebody you're, you're a piece of crap. You're terrible. You know, you're this, you're that. That could send a charge if they're not mature enough to, to, to be in a space to be able to deny those thoughts and know because self-image comes down to basically piling thought upon thought upon thought upon thought upon thought until it becomes dominant. And then it becomes your dominant self image. And so if something comes along that is not resonant with your self image, the self image that you got is so strong. The thought forms that you have are so strong. Nothing can take away from it. 
So you got to feed your mind the thoughts that you like to focus on. You can do that. The best way to do it is through every single sense you possibly can. Right. See what's good. Hear what's good. Feel what's good. Touch what's good. Whatever it is, use all your senses and that will create the change that you want. All right. Number two. <laughs> Observe what comes in the form of thoughts as you build new mental patterns. Right. Observe what comes in the form of thoughts as you build new mental patterns. And so what this is. OK. What this is. Is that. When you're beginning to move from a place of, let's say, negative thought forms to optimistic thought forms. It's almost like and this is a perfect example, having a cup full of dirty water and just pouring a whole bunch of clean water into it until it overflows and then there's no more dirty water. But as it's getting to the place where the dirty water is making its way out, all the dirty water starts to come up. Right. And the dirty water represents negative thought forms, thought forms that don't serve you. Right. So it's up to you to see what attempts to come up, because a lot of times if our mind has been fed for something so long. It's like trying to take a new toy from a child. It's going to. No, no, I'm not letting this go. You won't. You have to be diligent when you let it go. But you also have to be diligent, but in the same token, be observant. And what I mean by that is. Like, observe what's coming from it. Like, what is it that you used to think? And you know what you ask? Do I really feel that way about myself? Do I really think that way about myself? And chances are you don't. Chances are you've picked that up somewhere along the line in your journey of your life. And it's not even yours that you that you are choosing to have and have live out in your experience. Most of the thoughts we have once we get to adults, it's shocking how many of them have been 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 basically running our lives and they're not even our thoughts. They're like our authority figures. There's our there are guardians. There's, you know, the kids we've been exposed to, there's experiences we've had when we were little kids. Like a lot of times it's just not ours. And that's where we have to reclaim, you know, the truth about who we are. And that's one, that's tapping into your divinity, but it's also understanding if a thought comes up, like if something says simple, like you're not good enough. It's like, is that really what I feel? Absolutely not. Right. That would be my, my choice if something came up like that or better. Yeah, it would more be, be like, I don't believe it. I already know who I am. And that's part of building that self image psychology. But observe what comes up. Right. Because once again, the, the clean water has to filter out the dirty. Right. And it's going to bring up some stuff. And your job is to not get attached or get led astray by the stuff that comes up, but rather reaffirm the stuff that you know to be true about yourself now. All right. So that observing comes in handy, guys. It does very much so. All right. And then finally, and this is this is really the 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 creme de la creme, so to speak, of understanding mental equivalence and mental dominant thoughts. And it's just be relentless when it comes to your attention and where you place it. And why do I say that? I say that because our attention, even though a lot of us don't know it, is the most valuable thing that we've ever been given because where attention goes Energy flows. This is why marketing advertising companies pay millions and millions and sometimes billions of dollars to get what your attention. You're scrolling through social media. There's an ad attempting to get your attention. Right. You're you're driving down the street. I mean, let's say you're, you know, for many years is in in Los Angeles. And I can remember the first time I had to go to an audition on Sunset Boulevard and I couldn't get over how many billboards, how much stuff was was trying to vie for my attention 
you know, to the point where it can almost make you crash if you're not careful. Same with Las Vegas. You know, outside of Vegas, absolutely nothing. You go to the strip, every single thing is vying for your attention. Because what? They know that if they have your attention, they can control your thoughts. I'll say that again. They have your attention. Whoever has your attention is controlling your thoughts. And it, it goes without saying that the individual, the entity, whoever it is, they have your attention. They can control your thoughts. So you have to find yourself in a place where you're being relentless, with which you place your attention upon. Right. Watching the news for extended periods of time. That ain't going to cut it. Right. Because then you run around and you're full of fear. You're holding thought forms that are sabotaging your prosperous way of living. Right. Anything to any degree that places you into a position to make you think something you choose not to think or you'd rather go in a different direction from. You've got to figure out how to get your attention off of that thing, off of that 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 entity, because it's controlling. Right. You know where you put your attention on where it matters the most and where it has the opportunity to literally transform your life into something just wildly and unimaginably wonderful is inside. You take that attention, you place it inside, you place it on the divinity within you and you let that be the first and foremost and primary source to place your attention upon and watch how your life unfolds. Watch what happens when you put all the attention on source and then you let that take its course as opposed to putting all your attention on the news, putting all your attention on these ads, putting all your attention on any other type of stimulation that's controlling your thoughts. It's a science that has been proven over and over again, but it's one that we don't have to fall victim to. We have the ability and the power to choose where our attention goes and remember whatever wherever attention goes energy flows right whatever has your attention is magnified and expanded in an absolutely amazing capacity right just astronomical so guard your attention put it on what you desire to see come into your life all righty all right ladies and gentlemen that wraps up today's message. Once again, if you have any questions, any comments, if you would like prayer or for us to stand into divine agreement with any type of solutions that you may have or want in your life, feel free to write to us at SeanG04 at gmail.com. We'll get to that as soon as we can. And once again, so a seed today. It's a new week. Start the week off. Take the energy of love. If you feel you've benefited from this content, if you feel you have learned something, if you feel that your life is better because you've listened to this ministry, not just today, but in past days, sow a seed. Let that energy of love resonate in you, through you, and into this ministry. Venmo, Heart of Christ Ministry, PayPal, SeanG04 at gmail.com, and Apple Pay upon request. Thank you in advance for your kindness and generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, that will wrap up today's message. Uh, like our Facebook page, if you get a chance, Heart of Christ Ministry. Matter of fact, yeah, do that. Give us a like there and also share this video because who knows who it can help. It's something that's coming from my heart. And ultimately, this is my calling. And I'm happy and excited to be here and happy and excited to give you the very best of everything. All right. And so with that being said, that's all I got for today, folks. So have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. Every dream begins with a vision. A vision that sees everything before anyone else ever can. A vision that ignites the endless power to make all your dreams come true. Your truth is in this vision. Now is the time 